Section 7.3, example 2. So let's graph another hyperbola. And again, it's when we have differences that it's a hyperbola and not an ellipse. So you'll notice otherwise they look very similar. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find the vertices and foci. And then we're going to draw that ox box and asymptotes. And then we can draw the hyperbola. So let's start with um, simplifying the equation so that we get a 1 on the left side. Um, so right now, this one looks like a horizontal because I have x squared minus 9y squared. But notice it equals negative 9. So that's actually going to change the direction. So we're going to divide everything by negative 9 so that the, left, the right side becomes 1. So we get x squared over negative 9 plus y squared. I'm going to write it over 1 just so it looks more like the formula, equals 1. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the order so it looks like the formula that we have. So y squared minus x squared over 9 equals 1. And so now we know we have a vertical hyperbola because y squared comes first. So that means my a is 1 because a is always whichever one comes first. And b is 3 for 9. 3 squared is 9. So that'll help us find all the properties. So the vertices are at A, since it's horizontal, the vertices will be on the horizontal axis. Or sorry, since it's vertical, the vertices will be on the vertical axis. Sorry, I'm saying vertical and horizontal so much. But it'll be up and down for vertical. So it'll go this way and this way. Um, so my vertices will be at A. Since it's on the y-axis, it'll look like 0 plus or minus a. So we get 0, 1, and 0, negative 1. And then um, the other vertices aren't real vertices, but we'll use them for the ox box. So this would be plus or minus 3, 0 for b, because those are on the x-axis. So those are not points on the hyperbola, but they're going to help me draw the ox box. So we'll plot these. And you can see we've technically already made the ox box. All right, and then we need the foci, and then we'll draw the asymptotes. So the foci will be on the y-axis, so they'll be somewhere here and here. So because they're on the y-axis, it'll be 0 plus or minus c. We just need to find c. So c squared is a squared plus b squared. So in this case, that would be 1 plus 9 or 10. So c is square root 10. So 0 square root 10 and 0 negative square root 10. And I usually leave it exact, but we'll just approximate to get an idea of where that is. So around 3.16. So 1, 2, 3. We'll go a little bit past 3. And a little bit past 3. Perfect. And then once we draw the asymptotes, we can graph. So the ox box, again, is coming from A and B. So we drew the ox box. And then we'll draw asymptotes. So they go from the corners. So this ox box is telling me this, this is actually a pretty wide hyperbola. So you'll see that in a second. So those are my asymptotes. You could find the equation if you wanted to. Um, you don't need the equation. But if you wanted to find the equation, it's y equals plus or minus a over bx. So in this example, it would be one, plus or minus 1 third x. But we were able to sketch it without even knowing the equation. And so what that tells me is it flattens out towards the asymptote. So this is a really wide hyperbola. So the asymptotes are important because it tells us if it's really wide and flat or if it's more steep. So it is important that you find the ox box. And that's my hyperbola. So this might be weird. It's a totally new shape, probably for most of us. Um, but hopefully it's not too bad with the ox box. Um, let's try finding an equation now. Let's go backwards. So we have a hyperbola with vertices at plus or minus 3, 0, and foci at plus or minus 4. 
Um, I don't really need the graph, but it does at least help me know if it's vertical or horizontal. So if my vertices are at three and negative three, on the x-axis, that means I have one that goes this way, side to side. And my foci are at four, not that that affects the graph. Um, so I know I have a horizontal one, which means I have x squared come first. So the graph just helps me realize, is this, do these vertices make a horizontal or a vertical? So this one's horizontal because they're on the x-axis. And so it'll be x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. And so we already know a squared because we know the vertices. So a is 3 from the vertices. We don't know b, but we know c is 4 from the foci. And so we can quickly find b. So b, um, we learned what? We learned c squared equals a squared plus b squared for hyperbolas. Again, remember formulas are different for ellipse, for ellipses. So what do we get? We get 16 equals 9 plus b squared. So minus 9 minus 9, what's that? 7 equals b squared. And so we don't really care that it's the square root of 7 because we're going to plug in b squared. So my equation will be x squared over 9 for 3 squared minus y squared over 7 equals 1. And that is my equation of a hyperbola.